The United States, now under mounting pressure, began to close its grip. Rumors spread that intelligence agencies were quietly monitoring Maxwell's every move. Whispers circulated about possible plans to seize the technology before it slipped out of their hands. In a late-night interview, an American senator issued a grave warning. This device could shake the global economy to its core. If we don't control it, someone else surely will. His words sounded less like caution and more like a threat. Standing by his hotel window, Maxwell looked out across the skyline of Washington, D.C. He felt the weight of the moment pressing down on him. He was no longer simply fighting for recognition of his work. He was fighting for ownership, for Africa's right to protect its own genius, and for the billions of people worldwide chained to expensive electricity bills and unreliable grids. Quietly, he whispered to himself, This is not for sale. Not to America, not to China, not to anyone. But powerful forces were already moving in the shadows, ready to test just how far he was willing to go. The very next morning, rumors of sabotage surfaced. His demonstration unit, the same machine that had stunned the world, suddenly failed during a private test in a secure U.S. facility. Engineers swore it had been tampered with. Maxwell's team grew uneasy. Security cameras showed strange figures moving near the storage area at night, but the recordings vanished mysteriously before investigators could review them. It became clear, someone did not want this invention to succeed without their control. Back in Africa, leaders began to raise their voices. The African Union called for an emergency meeting, demanding that Maxwell bring his invention back home. One president declared on live television, Africa has created this miracle, and Africa will not allow it to be stolen, hidden, or silenced by foreign powers. Crowds filled the streets of Harare, Lagos, Nairobi, and Cape Town, waving banners that read, Power to Africa, Power to the People. For the first time in modern history, the world was no longer looking at the West for solutions. It was looking at Africa. Meanwhile, in California, Elon Musk broke his silence. Cameras swarmed as he carefully delivered his statement. What Maxwell has built is remarkable, but extraordinary inventions often face extraordinary resistance. The real question is not if it works, it's whether the world is ready for it. His words were measured, but the impact was undeniable. Tesla's stock dropped sharply the next morning, and speculation filled the tech industry. Was Musk preparing to support Maxwell or to oppose him? Realizing that the storm was closing in, Maxwell made a bold decision. He reached out directly to African leaders, requesting an emergency flight back to Africa with his prototypes and design files. But time was against him. Rumors spread that American agencies had quietly placed his name on a restricted travel list. And somewhere inside the intelligence community, serious discussions were underway. Should the invention be contained or allowed to change the world? One night, under tight secrecy, Maxwell boarded a private jet bound for Addis Ababa. He was escorted by a small group of African diplomats. At the airport, security was unusually intense. Unmarked cars followed the convoy, and at one moment, a black SUV swerved across the runway lights, only to be forced aside by local police. As the engines roared to life, Maxwell held tightly onto his prototype and whispered, They will not bury this. The jet lifted into the dark sky. Behind him, Washington seethed with anger. Ahead, Africa waited with open arms. When Maxwell landed in Ethiopia, the scene was breathtaking. Thousands of people lined the roads leading from the airport to the African Union headquarters, waving flags and chanting his name. Inside the AU chamber, leaders from across the continent rose to their feet in a rare show of unity. One elder statesman declared, For centuries, Africa's brilliance was taken from us, but today we hold our future in our own hands. The chamber erupted in thunderous applause. Maxwell's invention was no longer just a machine. It was a symbol of independence. Years later, historians would look back at this moment as the dawn of a new era. Maxwell Chikumbutso's self-powered generator 
was not simply a piece of technology. It was a revolution. Standing beneath the African night sky in a speech broadcast around the world, Maxwell's voice rang steady and clear. For too long, we were told that true innovation could only come from elsewhere. But today, Africa lights not just itself, but the world. And this time, no one can take it away. The crowd erupted with cheers as lights across the continent glowed brightly into the night. From the smallest villages to the largest cities, a wave of pride and hope spread. It was not just electricity filling the darkness. It was proof that Africa had claimed its future. A future powered by its own hands and a promise that the world would never forget.